A few weeks ago, I made a video about the fact that an independent developer has managed to get Blender working on Android devices. If you missed that video, long story short, it's not particularly usable right now, but it's a very promising development if you want to see Blender working on a mobile device at all. In that video, I made two claims that have already proven to be incorrect. Firstly, I said that you would probably never see Blender on an iOS device, mostly because the App Store has uh, terms and conditions that aren't really compatible with Blender's license. And secondly, I said that as far as I know, the Blender development team are not really interested in making a mobile version of Blender. As you've probably guessed by now, neither of those things turned out to be true. So in this video, I'm going to explain why. Before we move on, I have a new course available called Isometric Spaces. This is a beginner friendly course designed to show you how to make isometric style graphics in Blender. In module one, I'll show you how to make this cute stylized kitchen animation. And in future modules, we'll cover environments like cyberpunk buildings and metro stations. Right now, you can save 25% on this course or any of my other courses over at Gumroad if you use the code JULY25 at checkout. You'll find the link in the description. In order to maintain the illusion that I actually know what I'm talking about when it comes to Blender, I often check out the developer portal on the Blender website. It's a place where the devs go to talk about what they've been working on over the last week, but there's also a blog section where they announce big new features that are coming to Blender. So I was surprised the other day when I checked out the blog and I saw that there was an article called Beyond Mouse and Keyboard, Get Ready for Blending on the Go. So not only is Blender officially coming to mobile devices, but it's also coming to iOS devices as well. Not only that, but it seems like the development team have actually been using a Apple iPad Pro as the main test bed while they're working on the development using a stylus as well. It seems like the vision they have for this mostly revolves around people using a tablet and a stylus to do things like sculpting and drawing with grease pencil. The blog does make it clear, however, that this is going to be a fully fledged version of Blender with all of the same abilities that we have in the desktop version. This is going to be like a watered down Blender Lite mobile version that has half the features stripped out, nor is it going to be simplified for people who don't use the regular version of Blender. It's going to be able to do all the things you can do right now, at least in theory, but you're going to be able to do them with a interface that's a lot more practical for using your fingers or using a stylus. So there's a few mockups on the blog right now showing you how things are intended to work and the sort of design philosophy that they're looking at. Basically, it's going to be a lot of single full screen windows that are really prioritizing uh, screen real estate. So they're going to try and keep menus to a minimum and you'll basically just bring up the different uh, tools that you need at the time and then menus should collapse by default so they're not taking up too much space. The tool setting header bar that normally goes across the top of Blender that has brush size and things like that is going to be replaced by floating panels that are better for pen inputs and there's also been work done on how objects are manipulated so how you drag things around in blender using just gestures and things like that now obviously this is just a mock-up i wouldn't read too much into this specific ui because i'm sure things will continue to change and evolve over time now the blog post does mention that some tablets support the use of a mouse and keyboard in which case users should be able to use blender just like they do on desktop that gives me the impression that this is probably going to be a toggleable UI where users will either be able to access Blender as it normally looks on desktop or switch over to the mobile specific UI that has all of the tools that are made for a stylus or a pen. Now, I don't personally use a mobile tablet, but I do have a graphic drawing tablet that I use as a second monitor. And I also use that when I do sculpting or painting inside Blender. Now, at the moment, with the default Blender UI, it is a little bit of a pain sometimes to do sculpting and drawing and things that are kind of intended to be done with a mouse and keyboard when you're actually drawing straight onto the screen. So I'm pretty excited about the idea that we'll be able to maybe access this on uh, display tablets as well that are hooked up to a desktop computer. 
So it'll make things easier to use, even if you're not necessarily on a mobile device. And the blog post does also talk about the fact that there will be other UI benefits that will be brought into the regular version of Blender as well, and will be beneficial for everybody. The development for the mobile version of Blender is being conducted in a separate branch, which basically just means that there's going to be two versions of Blender being developed, the regular one that most people are going to be using, and a separate one that just has the mobile features in it. Once the mobile features are at a state where they are ready to be used by the public, it'll all get rolled back in together and it'll go into the main build of Blender. So what that means basically is if you regularly download the alpha or beta builds of Blender, you won't see any experimental features for the mobile version. You would have to download a specific different branch of Blender to see that stuff. The Blender development team has put out a call requesting for help. If you're a Blender contributor already, or you would like to become one, and you have extensive experience developing apps on mobile, especially on iOS, they'd really like a help with some more specific things that you might be able to help out with. I'll leave a link in the description to the places where you can volunteer to help out. It's unclear exactly at the moment when we're going to see an actual release of the mobile version of Blender. Sagraph 2025 kicks off in a week's time and the Blender team are planning off showing a tech demo of what they've been working on so far. And hopefully at the Blender conference in a few months time, people will be able to get their first look at what they've been working on. But I'm unsure exactly when we're going to actually see a full release of this. So I would like you guys to let me know what you think about this development. Do you think that Blender working on mobile devices is a good thing or a bad thing? Do you think that it's maybe a bit of a waste of time? I'm a little bit on the fence about it. I know that a lot of people have mobile devices and that it would be helpful for a hell of a lot of people if they could use Blender on the go, just have a tablet in a bag or something like that and kind of work on the sculpting while they're out and about, maybe university or college students who can't take a desktop with them on the other hand i am kind of worried about the fact that it's maybe stretching the development team a little bit thin at the end of the day the blender foundation and the institute only have a certain amount of funding for staff and adding one more platform or multiple platforms that need to be supported might be a little bit too much i'm just hoping for their sake that they're not taking too much work on Either way, let me know in the comments what you think about this. Remember to check out the link in the description where you'll find the blog post and you will also find a link to my Gumroad page where you can save 25% at the moment using code JULY25. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in a few days with another video.